Lights go down, crowd comes in on stage once again.
Thank you, thank you very much. I uh, think I tweaked the hammy coming down the middle aisle. Old Elvis will be all right. This, this suit doesn't fit as good as it did about 40 years ago. So I must have grown a couple inches. First and foremost, I want to thank my backup band from Kettle Run High School. And Mr. Matt Money Man Yonke. You know, uh, I always wanted to play Kettle Run High School since I was a little, little Elvis. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Washington Post outstanding leader, principal, all around great guy, principal of Kettle Run High School, Mr. Major Warner. Come on up, Major. wants to follow that. <laughs> Sorry for that word. All right, before we begin, uh, begin and, and I certainly want to say thank you to Elvis for that uh, most gracious introduction. Um, let us all stand, please, so we can have the presentation of the colors by the Liberty High School JROTC. Remain standing as we will recite the pledge when they're done. You may be seated. I want to say thank you to Liberty High School um, and Colonel Feldman and the JROPC. First, I want to say thank you to Young and our dad's family. I can't see that screen behind me, but if you see a dot on my forehead, um, don't adjust the screen. It's, um, I, I, thankfully won a battle with the bottom of a swimming pool the other day, so uh, it's there. want to say greetings and welcome to Kettle Run High School in Convocation 2015. want to say welcome to all of our distinguished guests, uh, local representatives, in particular our school board members. Your continued presence and support of our schools is greatly appreciated. I want to share a couple things with you today. Folks who know me know that I don't talk for a really long time. I try to find a simple message. I'm going to try to do that for you today. Um, we recently met um, with our leadership team um, recently, and we were talking about test scores and discussing the gains and gaps. 
Uh, and that morphed into the significance of relationships and students who are traditionally underserved in our schools. And I made the following statement. You can have longevity in this business and make a good living on 90%. You see, all of our schools do well. It's a great place to work. We all do well. But that also means that 10% of our students do not do well. And you leave a legacy on what you do with that other 10%. I was a 10%er. I was one of those kids. And that 10%, what we do, defines what happens to us for the rest of our life. That 10% is our greatest opportunity. We are all reminded that our students don't have a say as to what they are born into. Some are fortunate to have a lot in life that's full of support and resources, but a growing number of them do not. And they will show up on Monday with all of that in tow. Each and every student will be touched by someone sitting in this gym in some way throughout the school year. We've heard and had conversations over the past year about mindsets, fixed in growth, and I've shared throughout this experience those individuals who changed my life. People who did not judge me, but simply saw a kid who had some potential and did what good educators do. They simply helped me to fulfill it. Connected to this statement will be two quick stories from the 70s and the 80s, and I know a lot of the folks that we've hired weren't even born then. Um, but I've shared it with some, and it will illustrate how good teachers make an impact in different ways and had a growth mindset long before we labeled it growth mindset. In eighth grade, I got into trouble in Coach Brown's class. I thought the world of Coach Brown, and still do, he brought me into his office, and the words out of his mouth were the words that I had heard at home before. They were this. This is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. <laughs> now, I didn't believe my mom when she said that, and to this day, I still don't believe Coach Brown. But I never got into trouble in his class again. Some days, we feel like he did, but I would not advocate that type of growth mindset. My first introduction to public school was kindergarten 1974, Northwestern Elementary School, now called Thompson. It was not long um, in terms of years after Fauquier County had fully integrated its school. Betty Putnam was my kindergarten teacher. Okay. And what I remember was that she was really nice to me. I distinctly remember her saying to me how special I was from day one, and I couldn't wait to get to her class every day. When I got the job at Keller Run in 2007, shortly thereafter, I'm sitting in the office and my secretary handed me a piece of mail. The return address on it had Putnam on it. I opened the letter and a picture fell out. The note said, hi, Major, it's Mrs. Putnam, your old kindergarten teacher, and I recently retired. I was going through some things and I found your kindergarten picture. I'd kept it all these years. I'm so proud of you. I knew there was something special about you when you came into my class. On the back of the picture, she had written, I always knew you would be somebody. Now, you could argue, and I argue with people all the time, whether I am or I'm not, but 33 years later, a legacy came full circle. The message is simple, folks. We wake up and come to work some days feeling like we don't make a difference, that we don't get to decide outcomes for kids, that kids are this, families are that, and school administrators might be, and you can fill in the blank. But we do get to decide. We get to decide what we want our legacy to be. We have a choice in the words that we use, the actions that we take, and the connections that we make. All of us get to decide. It doesn't matter what job we have. We get to decide how we make students feel. The richness of the experiences that we create for them, we get to decide. I'm simply challenging you to continue doing for our students what we would want people to have done for us. We get to make those choices. I'm not here to change anybody's life, okay? I'm simply here to say we took an oath that when we took this job, we made a commitment to kids, okay? And we don't get to choose who sits in our classroom, all right? But we owe them, and I've said this to my staff a thousand times, doesn't matter how you come to work, we have a responsibility to give people the best that we have each and every day, regardless of the garbage that we've got going on in our own lives. We have that responsibility. Okay. Sometimes we get it right, and sometimes we get it wrong. I heard Rita Pearson say, it's okay to apologize. I apologize every day, 
Okay? I don't always get it right. All right? I'm not the best at what I do, but I try to give people the very best that I have. And the last words that I will leave with you is that I'm going to implore you to do the same for your kids when they show up on Monday. Thank you. Now, all right. At this time, I'm going to um, ask uh, Ms. Cheryl Wolf, who is the chair of our school board, to come up. I believe I'm supposed to do that for you. Um, she is a fierce advocate for our schools, folks, and I'm certainly I'm glad that she has joined us today. Thank you. Thank you, Major. That was wonderful. Okay, um, here we are. And what I want to say is every year I fret about what I'm going to do up here. So we need to have a little fun, get outside the box, do something different. And first of all, I want it with everybody who has worked over 30 years for schools, uh, please stand up. And we would really like to thank you. Thank you for those years for our children. Now, would everyone who is a new employee in the last three months also please stand up? Thank you, and thank you for choosing Fauquier County Public Schools, and we really want to welcome you to the Fauquier County Public School family. And that's what this is all about, is family. We are part of a family. So what better to do than have some people help us to celebrate this, and I want you all to participate when the music starts by the band here, is I want to introduce somebody who I thought we needed somebody that could really excite us. And this person does that for me. Um, she's a former uh, elementary school teacher at M.M. Pierce, and I want to introduce Shannon Cox. And... And, and also helping her are children of Fauquier County Public Schools uh, uh, employees are the Coxmen and the Nidex. So come on up. All right, and then I would like to introduce my fellow board members, Donna Grove from the Cedar Run District and Brian Gorg from the Center District. Not with us here today is Maureen Reardon from Scott. She couldn't get away from work. And then Duke Bland is recovering from a motorcycle accident. He's doing very well, uh, but we wish him a speedy recovery so he couldn't be here tonight. Okay, so Shannon's going to kick it off, and she'll tell you guys when to start playing. Okay, so everybody stand up. Stand up. All right, thanks. All right, hi, everyone. My... Uh Coxmen are a little nervous, but I do have Ava and Alana, so give it up for them. <laughs> All right, these moves are real simple, so I just want you to hang on. We're gonna have a really good time. Everybody needs to participate. Okay, guys, ready? Hit it. Thank you. 
Okay, so what I want to leave you with is what's on the back of the Liberty High School t-shirts today. It, yay! Is we believe in you. So thank you. Let's give our school board another hand. Thank you for that. I'm out of breath. I kept my scar from the king. I just want you to know I had <laughs> Celebrating the power within each of us is a theme today, and that this is the time that uh, we are honored to celebrate the power of the teacher. For those of you new to the Washington area, we want to just give you a little background. Each year, the Washington Post invites each school in the Washington area to select an outstanding teacher, each school division. The award is named for Agnes Meyer, a former teacher and grandmother of the former owner and publisher of the Washington Post. The Post believes that if there is any profession that deserves more recognition from its organization, it is the classroom teacher, and we agree. While the Post requires that we choose one teacher to represent the school division, we consider all the school honorees from last school year winning examples of the best this profession has to offer. It is now an honor to recognize each of them. They are sitting here in front to my left, and I'm going to ask each of them sta to stand as I call it, their names, and please congratulate them with your applause. Our first honoree is Nancy Dishner from P.B. Smith. Nancy is an extraordinary educator. She loves history, and she loves her fourth graders even more. Nancy shares her enthusiasm of history through her storytelling, characterization, field trips, and artifacts. She makes her lessons memorable and relevant so that students not only know history, but understand it deeply. This kind of energy explains her consistent 100% pass rate, but she will tell you it's not about that. It is about believing that what she is teaching is worthy of knowing and about teaching students to believe they can learn every bit of it. Her nomination statement stated that at PB Smith, very often when fourth graders are asked what their most interesting subject to learn is, they say history with Ms. Dishner. Let's congratulate Nancy Dishner one more time. <clears throat> Carrie Fox, from Mary Walter is our next honoree. Right there. <laughs> Carrie is an ESL teacher and she is described as a master teacher. She is endorsed in so many areas. She's a reading specialist, a certified teacher of the hearing impaired, and a certified general education teacher from preschool to seventh grade. And all of that shows. She is known as a professional who cares deeply and teaches with care, detail, and extraordinary knowledge. Students say that they know that she cares about them each time they meet with her. Her students adore her. One of her students wrote the following, if there is an award for great teachers, Ms. Fox should get it because great is exactly what she is. Please congratulate Ter Carrie Fox. Our next honoree is Christina Gibbs from Miller Elementary School. Christina teaches fifth graders to follow their path and achieve their best. As a former special instructional assistant, she saw the impact teachers can make. Now a teacher herself, Ms. Gibbs has distinguished herself as a leader and model. She designs exciting instruction, and her students enjoy the projects, activities, and games she uses to deepen their learning, especially Jeopardy. One student writes, Mrs. Gibbs is my favorite history teacher in the entire universe. She is funny and kind and makes learning a whole lot easier. I need to say it, Ms. Gibbs rocks. Congratulations, Christina Gibbs from Miller Elementary. Our 
Our next honoree is Kim Cruz from Thompson. If you meet Kim Cruz, even if you're having a bad day, all of us know this, you cannot help but smile. She has an infectious smile. She designs her instructional day at Thompson Elementary so that every minute is a meaningful learning experience for her students. In her position as reading specialist, she is positive and patient with her students, getting to know them on a personal level. One parent said this, my son can read now because of Mrs. Cruz. Another parent writes, we want everyone to know that our daughter could not have had a better reading teacher. We saw in our child the interest and love for Mrs. Cruz, and finally, a love for reading. Congratulations, Kim Cruz. Our next honoree is Mary Beth Nagel from Bradley Elementary School. Mary Beth Nagel is a tireless teacher who uses the power of kindness to encourage and support her second grade students. Her colorful and cheer cheery room is a reflection of her nurturing character and academic knowledge. She is a master at differentiation, using a variety of teaching strategies throughout the day with groups, large groups, small groups, partners, or as individuals. She ensures that every student can access the curriculum. And like so many of our nominees, she is also an extraordinary mentor. A colleague writes that she is the Mary Poppins of education. <laughs> the best compliment to Ms. Nagel, however, is when her former students say that second grade was their absolute best year ever. Congratulations, Ms. Nagel. Our next honoree is Liberty High School's Kim Niskanen. <laughs> Kim is often found working with students after hours to shore up their skills in Spanish one, two, or three, and here is her secret. She learns what interests her students and incorporates their interest into class lessons. Her classroom is a rich learning community where she sets the highest of standards and students help each other. She is known for getting students hooked on Spanish with her contagious and constant energy, as well as her passion for the language and culture. Perhaps the greatest compliment came from a 2015 graduate who said, Ms. Niskanen is a one-of-a-kind teacher. She believes that no matter who you are or where you've come from, you're always capable of learning something new and improving yourself. And that is what it's all about. Congratulations, Kim. Our next honoree is Lindell Palmer of Fauquier High School. <laughs> Mr. Palmer's vast knowledge of literature and language is apparent in every class he teaches. He is described by his Fauquier colleagues as creative and engaging, and somehow manages to balance being nurturing and demanding. He expects the absolute best from his students, and he knows how to support them in getting them there. To provide an example of growth mindset to others, I often use Lindell's words shared with me by a colleague. When the student had not written the best essay, he did not point out solely those areas needing improvement, but he also said the following, I believe in you as a writer, and I know you can make this better. That's a teacher. A former student of Mr. Palmer, who now attends JMU, shared with us that one of her professors at JMU said that he can always tell a Fauquier Palmer kid because they are so well prepared. Congratulations, Linda. Matt Ralph is Auburn Middle School's honoree. This is a wonderful teacher. Mr. Ralph's colleagues state that he embraces the belief that all learning is ignited through relationships, and he does just that with the students he teaches. Mr. Ralph provides each of his students with challenging programs that foster success in academic 
and behavior realms. A colleague writes that Mr. Ralph's patience, positive attitude, and expertise in his field of special education make him the best educator she has ever known. Matt leads the REACH Club, a club designed to provide time to autistic students to engage with other students outside of his classroom. One of the other students who works within the REACH Club wrote the following, never have I met a teacher who has quite been able to match his kindness and patience. While I may not have been one of his students each day, he has become my role model. He is an extraordinary teacher, hands down. Congratulations, Matt Ralph of Auburn Middle School. Our next honoree is Mary Keith Russell of Cedar Lee. Mary Keith's principal, David Lee, refers to as a, her as a quiet hero. She is soft-spoken with a calm demeanor, but is a true tour de force in and out of the classroom. The students in Mrs. Russell's math classes develop their skills through such interesting activities as determining how many bungee cords are needed for a Barbie doll to drop from the ceiling without touching the floor or calculating height and time components of a quadratic function by building and launching peeps. A colleague shares that not only has Mrs. Russell influenced career choices of many former students, she is the only teacher she knows who has former students return to Cedar Lee to shadow her for career day. Fauquier County Public Schools is very lucky to have her as a staff member. However, students are even luckier to have her as a teacher. Congratulations, Mary Keith. <laughs> Michelle Smith is the honoree from M.M. Pierce Elementary. Michelle is known in the Pierce community inside and outside the school walls as a creative, caring, and classy teacher. She works diligently to understand the whole child, seeking out information from parents, administration, and former teachers. From there, she tailors her instruction to meet standard stu standards, students' learning styles, and their interests. It is not surprising that she is one of the most requested teachers at Pierce. Her administrators and colleagues consider it an honor to work with her each and every day. Please congratulate Michelle Smith. <laughs> Pearson's nominee is Elizabeth Summers. Jim Pearson. Elizabeth is a first grade teacher who exudes genuine caring for each student who enters her classroom. They know she believes in them and in what they can do. She keeps the word try permanently on her blackboard and many former students credit this mantra of try to their success. Mrs. Summers considers the whole child and enables each student to develop, to develop in his or her own special way, whether she is working with a student who excels in math but struggles to read, one who excels at everything but needs to stretch even more, or the child who has difficulties managing daily activities. One of her former students says it best, Mrs. Summers not only taught us how to count, write, spell, read, and learn our ABCs, she is one of those kind of people who put a spark in our lives and tells us to follow our dreams. Congratulations, Pearson's Elizabeth Summers. Our next honoree is Kathy Silcox from Kettle Run. <laughs> Kathy leads by example, expecting no less from, from the students than she is willing to offer herself. She willingly gives up lunch breaks, comes in early and stays after school in order to assist students who need extra help. And her efforts have resulted in a 100% pass rate through seven terms of high school chemistry. <laughs> Kathy demonstrates a kind, patient, yet firm demeanor that compels her students to do their best. 
Colleagues say that she knows chemistry, conveys her, conveys her love of the subject, and her love for students. One colleague said she lifts us all up each day. She is a genuinely kind person who always makes my day. Students' comments are equally impressive, and one said the following. Mrs. Silcox has not only helped me learn chemistry, but has also taught me valuable life skills. She has the biggest heart and always puts her students before anything. I can honestly say throughout the three years I've been in high school that Mrs. Silcox is the best teacher I've ever had. Congratulations, Kathy Silcox. Our next honoree is from Brumfield Elementary, Lisa Testa. Lisa, with 20 years of teaching experience, is as innovative and energetic as a 20-year-old. Her experience and dedication to teaching is demonstrated in her classroom every day and in the comprehensive work she does outside the class. As a mentor, 24 coach, and STEM trainer and teacher, Ms. Testa believes that every single child can grow and learn and instills this mindset in each of them. She does not ignore students' weaknesses but provides support to help them overcome them. A colleague writes, Lisa is a cornerstone of Brumfield. She helps to keep the quality of teaching at a high standard. And a former student sums it up by writing, she has a larger than life heart, a loving and caring nature. You can't help but smile when you are around her. I think Ms. Testa is the perfect teacher to receive an honor for teaching. Congratulations, Lisa. Our next honoree is Cindy Kirk from Southeastern. <laughs> Cindy Kirk serves as a middle school math and science teacher. She is intimately aware of the achievement levels of each of her students, and she is frequently overheard saying to her students, think deeper, it's okay to fail, we learn from our mistakes, and ask your classmates, they can teach you too. Her frequent use of genuine praise and encouragement keeps her students naturally motivated and actively engaged. Those who have seen her teach have commented that to watch Cindy Kirk teach is to watch a master at work. And I've been one of them. She is a master. Most impressive is that students who have been previously unsuccessful or withdrawn quickly develop a sense of positive educational identity. With Mrs. Kirk's guidance, they begin to see themselves as smart and worthy and able to take on future academic and life challenges. With Cindy Kirk, they begin to believe in themselves because she believed in them. Please join me in congratulating and welcoming to the podium our choice for the Washington Post Agnes Meyer Award, Cindy Kirk of Southeastern. I really didn't know what I was going to say today, but I'm glad I didn't prepare anything because I was set up like most teachers. I didn't know Elvis was going to be here <laughs> or that Shannon was going to be up here dancing. I felt, my daughter, who's with me today, is a senior in high school this year, and she said, Mom, I didn't know teachers did the rave. I said, yeah. Also, um, <laughs> so there will be a mosh pit in just a moment. <laughs> I'll be in it. Um, but I really want to talk to Liberty High School for a minute because you're a bit rowdy up there. And I just want to remind you that I think Elvis is actually still in the building. Okay, um, in all seriousness, um, every time I hear my, my fellow nominees' bios, I am very embarrassed and humble because I think, did they get this wrong? Because there's some outstanding people sitting down there and next to me is a third-year teacher, a graduate of Fokker High School, who told me when I first met him that he became a teacher because of Mr. Palmer. So. <laughs> so. 
So take note of that, new teachers, because it's real, it's true. Um, I, I would like to make a suggestion to Elvis that we start calling Teacher Work Week. It's TWW. I, I'm suggesting we start calling it Team Work Week because when I first started in Falkir County, I was in the CAPS program, and I was in Central in Building A. And there were a wonderful group of county employees around me who made that program very successful because of what they did to help me. They were not teachers. They were county employees. And I hope that as teachers in our busy days that we don't forget all the people around us who make what we do possible. I, I really think that's important from the transportation people to the people that pull the wire for the cables. Thank you. Okay, back to Elvis. What I really, oh wait, first I wanna to talk to the jazz ensemble so you all can take a break for a minute. I bet the thing you really want to do on the end of the summer break was spend the morning in the gym with a bunch of teachers who were trying to dance. <laughs> I hope none of you had your phones out and videotaped any of that. I saw your faces, I know what you were thinking. <laughs> Yes, we have, we have no rhythm over there. All right, um, I wanna to talk to you a minute about risk taking, and I wanna to talk to you about resiliency. When I was a police officer in Fairfax County, I knew the risk of my job. It was very clear. I went to work each day knowing in the back of my mind that if I had to make the sacrifice, that I would for a fellow officer or for a citizen. It's not heroic, it's just crystal clear in the job. You know every day. But you prepared for that risk because you minimized it. You minimized it because you wore your bulletproof vest. You trained, you shot several times a year, you always called for a backup. You did everything and you trained and you trained and you trained to minimize the risk. And for most police officers, thank God, very few people have to give the ultimate sacrifice. And when I when people find out that I was a police officer, they say, wow, that's kind of cool. And I tell people all the time, being a police officer was much easier than being a teacher. Because, thank you. And I think the best way to sum that up is to tell you that I was sitting in the doctor's office one day reading an entrepreneur magazine, believe it or not, and there was a editorial in there by a woman who'd been an attorney a very, well, a very successful attorney and decided to become a school teacher. And she said, I figured out why people criticize teachers so much. And she said it was because most of us, 99% of us in this country spend 10 to 12, 13 years in school, 180 days, so we think we know the job. Just think about that for a minute. Most people who are students, which is all of us, we think we know what teachers do every day. So we are free to criticize. But until you're a teacher, you have no idea what a teacher does every day. You have no idea about the sacrifice of time that you never get back. And the risk in teaching is difficult to minimize. Because regardless of what everybody tells us, we know in the back of our mind, our biggest risk that worries most of us at nighttime is our students failing. Because in spite of all the things that we ask you to do and the days that you can't stand us, I don't care. Think about the teacher you like the least. I really want you to know that I've never met a teacher in Falkir County that really did not want to see you be successful. We lose sleep at night over that. So the upside to that is this. We can minimize that risk by doing a few things. Giving ourselves permission to fail and fixing it taking chances, trying new things. We can do that. It just takes guts. It took guts for someone to come in here dressed as Elvis because that, that really could have fell flat, right? <laughs> Let's be honest. I mean, it would have been easy for everybody to go, are you kidding me? <laughs> and then when poor Miss Cox came up here to do the dance, we all could have just sat there and looked at her. Some of us tried, but it wasn't working. But, <laughs> But that, that takes guts. So the last thing I want to say to you is this. I take chances at work, and I think that I receive some recognition because of the wonderful people I work with. I work at a school, we joked yesterday at a math meeting, the other high school. 
I work at Southeastern. It's not the school it was 10, 15 years ago. And I work at a school that's what I consider a very resilient school. We teach resiliency, we model resiliency, we allow the kids to fail, and we fail. But we've learned to laugh at our mistakes. Our faculty meetings, I hope, are never recorded. <laughs> but my colleagues are wonderful. And I, want, I know most of you are sitting over there and some are over here, but I, we're a very small staff. There's eight of us. And I just want to tell you that you know the risk I've taken, the mistakes I've made. We've had a lot of success, but we've taken a lot of risk to get there. And I really want to thank each and every one of you for putting up with me and allowing me and supporting me in taking those risks. Okay, I promise. I just want a quick thing to new teachers, truly new teachers. Here's a list of things I want you to do and not be afraid to do them. When you don't know, don't be afraid to say to a student, I don't know, let's find out. It's okay. It's okay to not know everything, right? Thank you. It's okay to say to a fellow teacher, I need help. A lot of new teachers think that, they're not, that that makes you look weak. No, it makes you look smart because you're saying, I need help. It's okay to go into your administrator's office and say, I am totally lost. Because if you don't, that tells me you're not trying to be a professional educator because everybody feels that way their first year. And most of us feel that way every year after that. <laughs> Isn't it true? Raise your hand for all of us that have been here a while. When, how many times, you, if you've been lost, raise your hand. If you've said, if you have no idea what, how to answer the student's question, raise your hand. Yeah, thank you. Here's the most important thing I want new teachers to do, and I bet the jazz ensemble will help me out with this. The most important thing you should do is ask yourself, when I'm teaching, what are the kids doing? Yeah, there's this thing out there called double planning. New teachers, find out what it is. Because if they're not, if they're not engaged, you're not you're, you could be teaching all day long, but there's not a whole lot of learning going on. Anyway, um, that's what I have to say. I hope I didn't bore you or take too much time. And I want to introduce the Kettle Run Jazz Ensemble with the money maker, is that right? Money maker Matt Yonke. I heard Elvis say that. <laughs> All right, thank you very much and have a great school year.
Sorry about that. Sorry, Dr. Mitchell forgot to give me my cue. Uh, I just, I'm uh, at a loss for words uh, in regards to the folks from Kettle Run. You guys, you're amazing. And uh, thank you so much. Wow. And I asked Matt yesterday, um, you've had four, four rehearsals? Four leading up to this. So thank you all very much. Um, outstanding. Um, my, my job today is to introduce our speaker, but I wanted to tell you, I ran into a guy, I'm sorry I'm late, I got held up, but I uh, ran into a guy in the back, white jumpsuit, uh, and ironically had the same shoes and um, argyle socks as me, which is amazing. Who, who knew? Um, if you're new to Fauquier County, yes, this is what convocation is about in Fauquier County. And the, the mantra and the message is, is simple. We, we work very hard and we take our jobs very seriously, but we try not to take ourselves too seriously. We try to have fun. It's important. <clears throat> and as I, as I encouraged new teachers recently at a new teacher meeting, you know, I hope you'll, you're able to spend some time in this first week with kids, getting to know them, something about them. Let them see who you are. Let them get to know you, get to know something about them. Be courageous, have fun. Um, be outside the box, overused term, I know. But take risks, within the bounds of the school board policy. But still, <laughs> take, take risks. Uh, it is a pleasure and an honor to introduce uh, today's guest speaker. I've known Brett for about 15 years now. And Brett is, he's a bit of a celebrity. He hails from the earthquake capital of Virginia, Louisa County. So uh, he survived the big earthquake unscathed. But I've known Brett for a long time. And every single time I've heard him speak, I've walked away inspired, encouraged. I feel a little bit better about myself and about the work that, that we all do. So without further ado, my pleasure to introduce Mr. Brett Leak. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Superintendent, very much. I thought you were at your top of your game today. <laughs> I hope everyone has a great school year. Enjoy and be safe. Thank you all very much.